Gentlemen, put your babies yeah, in the building! Yeah, yeah. Yes! And I love the background, all the pinball games. Are you a big uh yeah. do you do you jam a lot on, on pinball? Oh, these are our Friday night hangout pinball machines. So that people is... come over and we have some we play pinball. <laughs> that is wicked cool. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Carla. We really appreciate it. We got the double album coming out July 7th. I know the Europe tour is right around the corner. Why go a double album and how hard is it versus working on an EP or just a regular album? I imagine it's twice as much writing, but what 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 led you guys to that decision? Well, we had twice as much time off to do twice as much writing, right? With the pandemic and everything. And the question is, why not do a double album? No, you know, we had start. we were due to release an album in 2020, and then the whole world shut down. So our plans kind of changed. It was not the right time to do to do that. So we had a crop of songs that we had been writing in 2019. And then, you know, during that time of being at home, we had so many other thoughts and feelings that we wanted to put on paper. So we just decided to write even more, which was, I think, a great choice. And um, after not releasing an album for like five years, again, why not release a double album? <laughs> I love it. Is, is each album expected to have its own kind of sound and feel? Or is what is the substantial it difference between each one? You know, I, I think that um, Till the World's Blind is, is really, really heavy. Some of the heaviest stuff we've ever done, but also some of the lightest stuff we've ever done as well. And um, Eye for an Eye is much lighter, much more radio friendly, but also special. And I think it speaks to how our band has always been. We're the kind of people that don't limit ourselves to doing one thing or listening to one thing. I've always been multifaceted in everything I do and listen to. So of course my interests are gonna be multifaceted like that of my bandmates. So um, the albums are almost completely different from each other, but still there's something um, to love about each one. I love that. So a little bit of versatility, but still the, and then I read that it's gonna go back to a little bit of the OG Goliath roots on some of the songs too. Yeah, and people always say the OG roots. I feel like we never left those roots. I really do. We, we've always had these big melodic choruses and, and thrashy verses. Totally. So I don't think we've ever strayed that far. And I think people who say who think that we've strayed really far from our path just haven't really dug into who we truly are as, as a band. My, my co-host today... Will... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. You're, you're my guest. I, I, if you would like to elaborate. No, I was just, these two albums, like when we were discussing making the two albums, I brought up to Heidi that when I was a kid, I loved um, the, the Guns N' Roses double album, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. And both albums had distinct different feelings. One, the red album was very happy to me. And, you know, uh, the blue album was kind of dark and, in, you know, introspectful. And um, so that's what we tried to do with these two albums as well. Hell yeah. My uh, my co-host is a gentleman by the name of Encircled Throne, a.k.a. Mojo. Mojo, do you have a question? I do. I'm always interested in the music video world, and I know you all have several of them. Is there one that's just a favorite that you made or like like most exciting to make? Gosh, they're, they're all so much fun. You know, the, the special thing about Butcher Babies is that we are very hands-on with everything we do. There's not one video that we haven't been... Um, you know, totally hands on with. We've always written the treatments from our very first video for Mr. Slow Death um, to to the last video for Red Thunder, which Heidi uh, filmed on iPhone <laughs> and cut together. So we we are very very hands on, and all of them are our babies. You know, um, I love Mr. Slow Death. The video for that, it's the very first video we ever made, simply because I felt the treatment was great and we shot it out in the desert had a great storyline and then um i love our yorktown video as well we shot that at heidi's family's studio in in utah 
And we did our own stunts for that video, which was really cool. We were on wires and got to do a bunch of cool stuff. I'm a huge fan of comic books and superheroes. So we definitely got to be our own superheroes for the day on that video set. So it doesn't get better than that. Two part question. Who is your favorite superhero? And after a Butcher Baby show, is the Beaver Cage music video accurate? <laughs> so my favorite superhero <laughs> of all time, this goes back to my childhood, is the Incredible Hulk. Um, for some reason, I was obsessed with the Incredible Hulk since I was a kid. The Incredible Hulk was in one of my first fully formed sentences. Um, this is a true story. You can ask my mother. Uh, we <laughs> And there was graffiti, and I was obsessed with the Hulk. And I was like, Mommy, why can't the Hulk clean this up? <laughs> it's just a true story. Um, I think that as a kid, I always felt like he was a superhero that I connected with because he had all this rage. And, um, you know, I was an angry kid, and I, I loved the character. I still do. He's not my favorite anymore, per se, but there's something so nostalgic about the Hulk. Always love him. Um, and what was the other questions? I've already forgotten. Uh, if if the Beaver Cage music video is accurate of how what partying on tour is life. Exactly. Every night we play a whole show, <laughs> and then even a bigger party. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Do you do you exactly. have any do you have any uh, unusual vocal warm up techniques or post show <laughs> tricks that you do if uh, if there's back to back nights of gigs? Uh, Jaeger shots. Um, <laughs> we don't, so we, Rock that's swinger. one thing that I don't do very much. The only thing that I will drink on the road and that I have a great affinity for is Jaegermeister uh, because it kind of coats your throat. So um, if I'm having a particularly hard night, it's been a lot of nights in a row, then I'll have a little sip of Jaeger. And we call it Mama's Medicine, and that kind of like kicks us <laughs> back into gear. <laughs> um, we, we have silly warm ups that we do together. Um, that I'm not going to do right now because there's <laughs> a little private Eddie and Carla warm ups that we do together. Literally the same warm up since before we were even touring. It's it's really silly noises and stuff like that. So <laughs> something like Melissa Cross kind of practice stuff is that kind of what you mean? You know, I've studied Melissa Cross style warm up stuff, um, but I hear she's amazing. So she's uh, I hear she's great and helps people a lot. But we have our own little special formula. Cool. <laughs> I mean, it's working. Don't change it. Don't don't change it one bit. Could you could you take me through how you guys are at practice and it's time to just write a new song? How how does a butcher baby song get written? Okay, so we still to this day, and it's been difficult, you know, the last few years because I moved to Chicago, Heidi and Henry moved to Las Vegas. So we're not, you know, still the LA kids that can just, you know, drive down the street to the studio together and hang out anymore. But back in the day, we wrote um, primarily by getting in a room together and the guys would start jamming and Heidi and I would start thinking of vocal melodies in our head and just kind of throw stuff down. We were really inspired by being together in a room and just, you know, throwing shit at the wall like the old days. That is cool. That is cool. Mojo, do you have another one? Uh, and then did you uh, did Kelly inform you about the hot sauce? Yes, and I don't have any hot sauce at my house right now. <laughs> That's okay. If you're still down to do some <laughs> trivia, if it's it's I think it's, it's fun. Hot sauce. I Oh, okay, you do love hot sauce. Okay, that's okay. Uh, Walt, let me look up some trivia, but I want to know, do you have a favorite movie or TV show where if I ask you trivia on this, you will not get stumped? So I, I really love Natural Born Killers and Goodfellas. Those are my two favorite movies of all time. And it's been a while since I've watched each of them, so I don't know that I won't get stumped, <laughs> but I will. <laughs> I'll okay. Mojo, shoot her a question one time, and let me go ahead and look up some trivia. I'm going to go with Goodfellas, because I think that's – it's probably the best gangster movie ever. It's been a while, so. Okay. I'll go <laughs> easy. Make I'll go easy. I want to I wanna piggyback off the writing thing, because since y'all are the dueling vocalists here, do y'all ever argue or, like, fight over who's going to sing what part? Yes. That's why Heidi's not <laughs> here right now for a part. No, you know, um, we really don't argue about the parts. If there's something that I'm very partial to, I'll sing it. If it's something she's partial to, you know, uh, she'll sing it. And sometimes I, I, you know, I end up singing what she's written and she ends up singing what I've written. 
uh, it just what goes with our voices and what, you know, kind of mood we're trying to convey. And it, it We really kind of are on the same wavelength when we write, especially after writing together for so many years. We literally can finish each other's sentences. So um, it's not it's not like we share a brain. It's it's it doesn't hurt anyone's feelings. And uh, we just we want the song to shine for the song. So we, you know, we split up the vocals accordingly. Can we talk about the original Butcher Baby, Wendy O. Williams, and what she means to you? Well, um, you know, she was just an incredible force. There's, you know, when I was a kid, there wasn't many women. This, I hate saying this because I don't mean it in a negative way. But there wasn't very many women that I was, um, you know, um, inspired by that were in heavy, heavy music. I, of course, love the Riot Girl era of the 90s. I will tell you that I love Courtney Love. I love Patti Smith. Uh, but as far as someone who is just like a complete badass force to be reckoned with, the imagery of Wendy O. Williams and the things that she would do on stage and the, what she did like without you know, with complete abandon, didn't give a fuck what people thought of her, I thought was pretty brilliant. Um, and I remember um, an old boyfriend of mine years and years ago um, had, I was a kid, you know, I was in high school and he played me plasmatics and I was fascinated. And I thought, damn, I wish I could do something like that one day. And, you know, so I kind of took that inspiration with me throughout the years. And um, when I met Heidi, um, we covered the song Butcher Baby in a cover band, you know. So when we started our own original band, we thought it would be perfect to call ourselves the Butcher Babies since we were both so inspired by by her. It's perfect. Before we do the trivia, if it's okay with you, we're going to take, uh, take a chat question. And the question is, yeah. with Charlie being in a huge touring band as well, how do you balance opposite touring schedules? Yeah, it's hard. Like, for instance, I'm going to leave early on tour. I'm going to leave. Uh, so we we start our tour in Europe on June 15th, and I'm going to leave on Tuesday to go spend a week with Charlie before I go out on my own tour um, just so that I can see him. It's extremely hard. I'm going to miss out on a lot of things that I want to see this summer. There's those big Metallica Pantera shows that I don't want to miss, and I'm going to have to miss because we're out on our own big tour with Mudvayne. So um, it sucks. I'll see him when I can but um, I do as much as I possibly can to be with him when I'm not on the road awesome so there, there's absolutely balance for sure that's cool he gets the whole week that's awesome uh, let's let's yeah. jump into this this good fellas trivia I, I think I'm going with an easy one I think I'm going with an easy one in good fellas when Henry Hill is a teenager Jimmy Conway puts what in his pocket as the first thing he ever puts uh, or gives Henry. What is the first thing Jimmy gives him, but he puts it in his pocket in the beginning of the movie? Oh. Would you say I'm sorry? A hundred dollar bill. Money is correct. We'll take it. That is 100 percent correct. Hell yeah. I'm spinning the wheel. I have to probably be tortured right now. It's part of the show. All right, I uh, I don't even have the sour slime on me, but I have to somehow still do this interview as a professional and eat some sauerkraut <laughs> while while still chatting with you because we we kind of like to spice it up around here. But uh, so let me let me do that. But uh, I have a bunch more questions for you. Um, can you can you explain uh, a show where everything went wrong? But somehow you guys made it through the gig, but just literally as soon as you... Oh, th my wife brought the sour slime. Kenny, thank you, in so we can do it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Tell me tell me about everyone has a worst show ever. Everything went yeah, wrong I, at this particular gig. We've had bad shows, and then we've had a really bad show, and that was Niagara Falls on our tour with Danzig. We were really excited about this tour because I've been a huge Danzig fan since I was a kid. Doyle was on the tour. And uh, most nights it was uh, incredible. And then there was Niagara Falls. And these punk rock kids did not want to hear Butcher Babies at all. They booed us so loudly that oh, no. it was incredibly distracting. 
And then the 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 moment that I'll always remember in my life is Henry, our guitar player, threw a guitar pick out in the crowd, and then someone threw the guitar pick right back at him. <laughs> We're like, oh man! But so it wasn't so like a technical is- aspect; it was just like an audience perspective that was bad. We've never had that before, where it was just a um, it, the audience mm. wanted the headliner, and that was all they wanted. And that you know, like I said, most nights on that tour were amazing we had a great time i love love glad danzig love doyle but that night was um it was <laughs> laughable we laugh about it now because what else can you do exactly you just you just move on to the next one and just be like well they we, we put on a great show they just you know it is what it is but uh what what are when i know you're leaving for for europe on june 15th what is just a, a bag full of essentials you would recommend every touring artist keep in that bag and I'm going to go ahead and do, by God. the way, this sauerkraut, sour slime Very in the different. background. Can you see that? For, for I don't that. Know. I, you know, you're so tiny on the screen. Yeah, I see it. I use I use a couple yeah. different cameras. So like the team's camera. I don't know. I'm going to upgrade it soon. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that looks pretty gross, though. Whatever you're it's doing. It's going to be terrible. Um, so my bag of essentials is is different. It's got like throat coat tea. It's got vocal zones. It's got little Jaeger shots. Um, and, uh, that's about it. That's, that's the essentials right there. I bring my iPad so I can draw all day. Cause that keeps me at peace when I'm on the road. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that actually that's leads you, you segued right into my next question, which is how do you create art, uh, for pretty girls, uh, dolly things while on the road? Oh, a pretty girls do ugly things. So I, uh, that's what I meant. Sorry. basically you are in a band You've got, especially when you're a vocalist and you don't got to, you know, set up your drums and all that good stuff. Um, you have a lot of empty hours during the day and empty hours are not good for me. <laughs> so I, um, when we started touring, I started drawing every day and um, I've turned it into a, a, you know, a side business and I sell my art and apparel and um, I sell, uh, you know, annual uh, books of my art and all kinds of great stuff. So on tour, you will usually find me in a coffee shop, you know, drawing on my iPad for most of the day until I have to go on stage. Do you have any phobias or anything that just that just scares you in life? Gosh, I used to uh, before I, you know, started touring so much. I feel like I used to hate flying in planes like that would that would scare the shit out of me to be honest with you i hated flying because i hate not being in control (laughs) i'm a control freak but um now i really don't have any phobias i mean i've worked in the worst industries i was a mortician before i was in butcher babies so i've dealt with you know um the, the hardest parts of life um death dying uh so i don't really have any crazy phobias i'm not really super grossed out by anything i'm not really scared by anything so i'm good okay on on the double album eye for an eye and till the world's blind is there is there a song that we have fans have not heard yet that just resonates with you more than another one and can we expect that to be a single or we have to wait to the seventh gosh there's there's a uh... There's so many cool songs, you know, and it's funny because you hear the songs when you're in the band, you hear the songs over and over and over again so many times. And then you have new favorites as time goes on. And um, I really love this song called Dreaming in Color off of um, Eye for an Eye. And it was one that we uh, we were going to release a long time ago and we never did as a single. And it's slowly become my favorite on the album. And it's just kind of a song. Um, it's kind of almost like, um, like a you know, Wizard of Oz type of song. Um, I, I you really think about um, when I think about how a music video would look for it, it would definitely be half in black and white. And then, you know, um, when we start the chorus, we talk about dreaming in color, and um, it's kind of a, an ode to like how life can be so dreary and then you know you go on the road and it's just this new experience but it's just a beautiful beautiful song and i'm so in love with it uh we have a song called last december um that is that is gorgeous you know it's funny we're a metal band but i really end up loving our songs that are a little bit softer so much more than anything else sometimes 
being that Europe's right around the corner and you've toured the world multiple times, is there a particular country that has the best food that you're looking forward to on the tour? So I really liked being in Poland last year. We were in Poland for the first time last year and we're going back again on this tour. And um, I grew up in Detroit and we have a uh, big Polish community in Hamtramck, Michigan. And so we had great Polish food. So I loved eating, um, you know, Polish food in Poland. That was really cool. And just a great, great fucking place. I loved it. Um, Everywhere in Europe is so cool. There's just so much happening. You know, we're a very young country here in the States. So when you go um, to Europe, and if you haven't been to Europe, you have to go. Um, so many people stay in the States their whole life. And yes, explore as much of the States as you can. But when you go to Europe and you see things that are thousands of years old, it's just like a completely a new experience and it just broadens your horizon so much. There's so many cool things to see so much history. I love it. Uh, Mojo, do you have another question? We, we've got time for me like three or four more and then we'll let Carla go. But uh, what would be, I've got a couple of serious ones I want to ask, but uh, let's do like a couple fun or two, one or two ones real quick. Hey, I've got a fun one. I want to know who do you want to call you to be featured on their song? Ooh, Oh, geez, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I wish that Pantera would do something new and then Phil would call me and ask me to do a little duet. That would be cool. Um, gosh. My favorite band growing up, my two favorite bands were Guns N' Roses and Pantera. So anything from, I'm old school. I love all the old stuff. I wish I could say it's a new artist that I'd like to work with, but I always tend to go old school. <laughs> I mean, that's a great answer. Uh as if, if someone mm -hmm. let's say let's say someone's watching uh, uh, a female that wants to get involved in music and do what you do, what advice mm -hmm. could you give to an artist that's just still in their garage that wants to do exactly what you do? Maybe there was a mistake you made early in your career that you don't want them to make, but just general advice that you could give a, a local a local vocalist. I, th I think that you have to surround yourself with people who are as ambitious as you. I moved to L.A. in 1998 to play music, and I was in many bands, and none of them did much of anything because the people that I had surrounded myself with weren't um, as ambitious as I was at the time. So um, when I, I gave up music for a long time, went to mortuary school, became a mortician, and was completely involved in that and then i saw an, a myspace ad which is how i met heidi and um we became best friends and i had finally met a person who was as ambitious as i was and then we found henry and um you know the, the our early bandmates and uh it was just like a different experience because everybody was completely invested in it and had the same vision which made all the difference in the world do you recall the like, can you just tell us something along the lines of what the MySpace ad said and why you were like, oh, I'm excited about that one. I'm clicking that one. So, yeah, so it was in, in MySpace. It's so funny, right? It's like, who when was, I was on it? I was MySpace? on it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so I, I uh, saw an ad um, for a band that was looking for another female singer. And it was a band that had a residency at, L at the Viper Room in L.A., it was called Switchblade Kitty, and it was like four girls with nipple tape on, and they were singing cover songs. And at the time, I had given up on music because it was just, it was just, everything was seemed fruitless. And I was working a job at a mortuary, and that's what I was going to do, and that was it. And I saw this ad, and I just kept going back to it, and I was like, damn, that looks like so much fun. I, I'd like to do that, you know? And so I, I sent an email or sent a MySpace message and I got an audition and uh, the rest is history. You know, um, Heidi was already in that band and that's how we met and we connected and we left that band and formed our own. That is so cool. Uh, my, my final question is just going to be kind of a fun one. When when not involving family, not involving music, what just makes you happy in life on a day a day off? Just this is this is Carla's day off, and I'm just gonna do everything that makes me just happy. So if I'm on tour and I have a day off, it's coffee, drawing, 
uh, having some alone time. If, if my boyfriend can fly in and hang out with me, I love being with him every second I can. You know, when you have a family, it's it's different experience. You really, you know, miss them all sure. when you're on the road. So spending time with him, at least on the phone, in a hotel room somewhere on FaceTime. But just, uh, you know, if, it, if I'm alone on a day off, then it's it's all about art and coffee and then maybe a glass of wine in the hotel bar later. <laughs> nice. I love it. Carl, this is an absolute blast. Be safe on the road. We're excited about the album. The double album coming out July 7th, Eye for an Eye, Until the World's Blind. This is an absolute yeah. pleasure. Thank you so much, and have a fantastic day. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Carla of Butcher Babies! Yeah, hell yeah! Welcome to the local band, Smokeout.